Hello again out there. Old Buck Dave, back at you one more time. Episode 104. Tell me who's with me. Yeah, Old Buck Dell. Old, old Buck Dell. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Come on down. Shired and shaved and ready to go. I'm ready to go, yeah. <laughs> Hey, this was kind of a homecoming for us, wasn't it? It was. It we, was. We yeah. had an actual, actual sit down at the coffee shop here the other day. It was nice. It was we nice. did, and it, it was a typical uh, coffee shop. Uh, what uh, banter? And, yeah, Repart- banter, repartee. Uh, yeah, we did our cold brews. Laughed a little bit. Laughed a little bit. Glad to see one another. Survived all the running around we've been doing. Yeah. So what's what else is going on in your world? Well, in my world, uh, yeah. I've been living with uh, chainsaw noise. Um, um, you must the, live in Florida. Yeah. Oh, man. The, the debris, the, the debris oh. fields around there trying to clean up. They're using those uh, big wood chippers. And it's just, I mean, it's just constant noise. I had left mm-hmm. the house the other day. I just couldn't take it anymore. A lot of trees that suffered damage were not salvageable. And I don't know. You know what it's like when that tree falls down or you cut cut something down the landscape just changed dramatically oh you know, yeah with all the light coming in and you, what you were used to so it falls into that category as the folks uh, will find that the to me the tragic part of this storm is uh, the, what's left and how it looks and how you feel about it and what you've lost and and uh, what it cost and all those things like that so that's what i've been doing for the last couple of days but it's kind of quiet right now so i can i can talk without that you know, that two stroke engine noise all over the place. Yeah. Hey, and by the way, if anybody anybody in the Florida area who's listening and wants to comment on their dealings with Hurricane Ian, feel free to write us at the bucks too old at gmail dot com. We're we're always here. We're always That's, here for you. I'm glad you mentioned that. I mentioned that. Actually, uh interestingly enough, um a friend who listened I told her about the two old bucks and uh and she tuned it in and she said, you know, my son is involved in the podcasting kind of thing. And, uh, and she gave us a nice compliment. Actually, she, she thought we sounded like uh, two old friends. And I two said, old guys. I said, that's our, uh, that that's what us. we do. You know, that's we, what we, we do. That's the theme of our program. But her son got involved and I said, well, uh, have him write to us at uh, bucks too old at gmail.com. And maybe we can hook up with him and Absolutely. do an interview or something. So we'll see if they're still listening, uh, and, and forget any response. Could to that. be reciprocal interviews. Yeah, you right. never know. You never know. I'd be happy for him. Happy spreading to support the love, him. baby. Spreading the love, huh? <laughs> happy to support him. Hey, speaking of spreading the love, I got my COVID booster the other day, Saturday. How'd that go? So, as usual, <laughs> my, you know, I'm a, I'm out on the tail of the distribution for reactions. <laughs> the good news is I only had 101 fever this time. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I was kind of laying around for two or three days, but. Didn't get chills, didn't wasn't shaking in my boots or anything like that. So that's that's better than the other one. So well, hey, some, two two days, it's worth it, you know. I agree. And some people some people react differently, just a sore arm and others. Yep. Uh but that's I think when I had typhoid shots and some stuff like that, I mean I I kind of experienced a bit of the you know, a bit of the fever. So I guess it's all working. You're, you're feeling better now. I hope I haven't seen I'm you for a day I'm, or two. I'm feeling great. I did a little bike ride yesterday morning just to test myself and uh, survived. And yeah, I am, I am feeling much better. I'm kind of back at it, man. Okay. Well, <laughs> back in podcast land. Well, that's, that's all good. That's uh, all so, good. So get your booster, everybody get your booster. So you, you, you mentioned something about a book. You for, you're for, you remember Goodnight Moon, the children's book? No, I they don't. Didn't have, they didn't have Goodnight Moon down in the Bull Run section of town. Okay. <laughs> oh, we didn't, I, in our section of town, you know, we didn't really try to learn to read till he was about seven or eight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then we all played catch up. You know? Yeah. So, but, so but this is a children's book that's a famous it, children's book? It's, it's 75 years old. It just It's having its 75th anniversary now. It's by Margaret Wise Brown. I, I remember reading it to our boys and my grandsons more recently. Huh. What's it about? I, I honestly don't know about it. It's, it's almost about nothing. It's, it's like our show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's and the, kid, about, the kids fell asleep halfway yeah, through it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a go-to-sleep book, I'll tell you. And this is okay. the honest truth. Uh-huh. I can fall asleep reading that book to somebody. 
Oh, really? It's it's about a you know it's about a little it's not a kid it's a rabbit okay so oh and so they're, they're just rabbits are not people so it's kind of universal everybody you know nobody nobody can complain about rabbits you know true and uh, it's about a kid going to going to sleep and you know grandma reading him a story and the fire burning in the fireplace and the mittens and the bed and it's just it's just very relaxing it really oh. is so. It's it's 131 words. That's all it is. 131 words. The book is 131 words. 131 words. That's that's less than we've spoken already. Well, like like By pictures, far. pictures, you know, well illustrated. Ah, good point. The, the illustrations are probably at least as important as the uh, text. Okay. It's it's illustrated. Let's see what's this guy's name. Clement, well, some, somebody Clement young Hurt. would somebody young would really relate to that. I'm sure. Yes, yes. Pictures just convey the words. Okay. Well, now I know what I got to get you for Christmas. <laughs> hey, if it helps me sleep. <laughs> it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a cute little book. It's a cute, little, it's, it's incredibly relaxing. It really is just a, anyway. And, and you find that you found the success of being in publication that long. Uh, that's something ca caught your eye. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I just saw a little article. It's having its 75th anniversary, and it had a big resurgence. It was written, well, 75 years ago. Do the math. It's 1950-something, I guess. Hmm. And uh, it had a big resurgence in 1981, and that's the year our older son was born, interestingly. So I definitely remember reading and buying it. And re Actually, my mother bought the book and gave it to us for oh. to read to him. So, yeah, scary, huh? Well, I've got a little adventure story if you're ready for that. The, I, yeah, I'm ready for some adventure. Talk, talk to me. Talk I, I to have me. a, I mean, you do a lot of things online where you book uh, rooms and passage and whatever. Have you ever run into a website called Agoda? Agoda. Agoda. A G O D A. Never heard of it. No, tell me about it. What's All that? right, this is why I mentioned it to you. I I recently. I uh, wanted to take a uh, sort of a close uh, stay-at-home vacation a couple miles away and just just to get away from the uh, the turmoil of that hurricane. So we went up to uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the rooms that I was looking for, I, I, I sometimes uh, check out those retro hotels. You know what I mean? They oh, were, yeah, yeah. The old ones that are kind of still salvageable and yeah. kind of need to be in, just something different. Yeah. So I knew of two of them up there, and I said, oh, well, here's another one uh, that actually had a very a, a great location. And, of course, the, there's some pictures that go with it, and it really looked retro. I oh, mean, this it, is the Agoda? This is the name of the place? No, no, I'll, okay. tell you how, I'll tell you how All that right. I'm sorry. In I'm sorry. I didn't mean it's not, the name of the hotel is called the Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon Hotel. Okay. And it... Uh, I mean, like I said, the photos and everything that they showed of the room and or the lobby was definitely very retro. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, let's check this out. So I went I went to the normal uh, procedure of like looking for Priceline or kayak or, you know, that whole crowd. Sure. Yeah. All right. The usual suspects. Yeah. The usual suspects. But when I clicked on this hotel, those guys didn't appear. They didn't appear, so I, I, I said, hmm, that doesn't that doesn't look right. They just didn't look like they weren't options. Mm -hmm. They were they were not options. So a little red flag went on in my head. I said, why why aren't those guys, you know, up for uh, representing this uh, this hotel? So I went to uh, another site and I I clicked on like uh, kayak or something. It was a, a well known website for booking hotels, mm -hmm. and immediately it switched me to this. Agoda, it came back up again. Now the the symbols of this Agoda have a very it looks like it could be a Gmail had the same colors of the you know that Gmail uh, logo. Okay. All right. So all this is getting confusing to me. And I said, well, this is the only website, and there was there was uh, uh, all the other ones weren't there. So I said, okay, I don't know about this. Let me see what happens. So I I began to process it. And they said, yes, we can book this for you. And uh, I, I thought I agreed on a, uh, on a price. <laughs> you thought you agreed. I thought I, I thought I had agreed on a price. This doesn't burn and, well. Well, yeah. 
So this is what that's why I'm kind of. I mean, maybe this is a public service announcement. It sounds like it's building up to that. Yeah. Sure. So I, I slowly. Uh, Go ahead. I I went ahead and clicked on it, and yeah. uh, and uh, they, it was legitimate, and they said, okay, put in this information, we'll book the room. Well, the the price of the room turned out to be quite a bit more than I thought, and I'll tell you how I discovered that uh, near the end of the program. So. I'm feeling uncomfortable about this. In fact, I'm watching very closely, uh, you know, the credit card transactions and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff now. But anyhow, it, I did get the room and I said, okay, here we go. Well, this uh, Ponce de Dillon Hotel is, does have a great location in downtown St. Petersburg, really within walking distance about everything I was interested in. But it was, it was terrible. <laughs> It was definitely made in 1946, and it was still in the 1946 condition. <laughs> I mean, oh, hey, Dave, I don't even know how to get I had They had no amenities whatsoever there at all. Uh, it had once been a glamorous, I think, hotel, but that was all closed down. Chairs were packed up in a period, would it be the dining room? And I, I should have turned around right there and walked away, but this Agoda, the, the Agoda guy gave you like four hours to cancel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, when you, are, way, yeah. when you read the print, it says this, this, this. And I mean, you really had to read it because I had to start quer querying the mm -hmm. thing. No amenities service was lousy. I mean, just incredibly bad. But there were people working there, like two. <laughs> you know, somebody at the front desk. And uh, so the wife and I said, oh, man. So we said, let's, let's tough it out. But I uh it was really 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 uh difficult to cope with i knew i couldn't get my money back and, and she said well why don't we just carry on tough it out yeah we did but why i'm telling you this and maybe anybody listening i never ran into that website and i wondered if it was a site that really takes on some high risk locations ah, you know what i mean like good question yeah. like priceline would not touch it kayak mm -hmm. would not touch it but these guys will rent you a room in a you know in a tent you know or someplace that's really 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 risky and then i demanded at the end of this process uh, a receipt and the receipt from the hotel was much much less so they took a substantial commission big chunk. yeah yeah they took a big commission uh, off of that to do this uh, with absolutely no way to, uh, to, re you know, to cancel out. I figured one night I'd just bail out and, you know, go someplace, upgrade somewhere. Nope. Uh, since I knew the neighborhood, couldn't mm -hmm. do it. So I didn't realize, uh, I never ran into that before. And if anybody's listening to this, uh, just be, be cautious. If you see all the, the big players kind of fade away, you know, be careful when you, yeah. the place you're looking at. So the pictures are very, very deceiving. Uh, the, the floors were slanted. I mean, I, I can't, I cannot begin to tell you. And, and actually, I'll tell you, I started to look at it. It was like, like I was in a third world country and, and it became an experience. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to endure this just to say I coped with it. You know what this sounds but, like? This, this uh, sounds like that experience I had uh summer of last year up in uh, up, up in finger lakes remember yeah that? very similar yeah oh, you were talking man, about that man that was like that was like the vacation from hell the place and, was so bad yeah and then i i looked at it and i'm talking with a, this front desk uh, person and i said what about this what about that and she said no 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 it doesn't say we have those things <laughs> <laughs> So I said, yeah, oh, I said, you're gosh. right. It, you're, you're right. You don't promise any of that stuff. It just lists it all there. You know what I mean? And I just read into this it. This would be it nice was, to have. It was available. Like you're no assuming... parking. <laughs> no parking. No parking. No, no you parking had to, downtown. You had, you had oh, to park geez. in a uh, regular public, you find public a space. Find a lot someplace. somewhere. Oh, so gosh. it was really an interesting experience. I managed to salvage uh, a good time out of it because uh, that is a nice, uh, nice area. The St. Pete downtown area is really, really, really kind of cool. So we splurged on some uh, uh, nice, uh, you know, nice dinners and a few things like that. And actually, uh, they had a great cigar shop. Wow. And, pretty and much was, makes up for it. Well, it, yeah. I could, only yeah. Afford, I could only afford one, <laughs> but it was a nice place to sit. <laughs> Must and, have been uh, a good cigar shop. Watch the, uh, watch the traffic go by. So anybody, if you run into that website, 
and you think this might be interesting or it doesn't seem right, go with your gut feelings, uh, good people, and, uh, you know, maybe stick with the name brand place or go someplace else and see if it, it's different. I think that's definitely a public service announcement. Yeah. So we're going to check that box for today. Okay. Ponce de Leon, you, you enter at your own <laughs> enter at risk. Your own risk. What's that? What's that song? Abandon hope, all you that enter. <laughs> no, that song by Eagles. You enter, but you never return. <laughs> well, that's the Roach Motel. That's the... Yeah. Uh, although I didn't see any, I actually <laughs> looked for some some critters. I said, you know, if I find some critters here, I'll I'll give me a clue. But oh. uh, I did not find. I kind of scared around a little bit to see if I could see something running around. But I said, man, even these guys, even these guys bailed out. <laughs> oh, speaking of critters. Yeah. No. No critters. I, I got a critter story. Oh yeah, what's oh yeah some, some critters that we're familiar with, perhaps? Very familiar with, especially you. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know who those guys are. What? Tell me about. Well, them. when we came back, we found these little little piles of dirt-ish stuff in the kitchen in different places, and it turns out we had ants. Well, this we is were, uh, clarify that you you're you're just returning to a house that had been empty yes, for a, a few been, weeks, w months, a few months, months, okay, several months. <laughs> and you said what are these little piles what of are these here? little things <laughs> so fortunately the the quarterly exterminator visit was coming up and i said yeah you guys got to do the inside version here and because we got these these little suckers were showing up everywhere it was ridiculous what did they call them to give them a like well, a... actually yeah they, 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 the guy called them ghost ants little tiny ones ghosts they're real tiny they're very light yeah and uh, he was a character. It was worth it just to have him in the house for an hour. This guy's name was Alonzo Nightingale. You know, if I could change my name, <laughs> that's what I'd change it to. That's the a, exterminator. A <laughs> that's a beautiful name. And this guy was such a character, and he had, like, his big floppy hat on. He never took off, and he, he looked like... Uh, like a know, movie, sounds like a movie character. Yeah, he looked like, you know, like the guy... <laughs> Tarzan movie or something. So, so he was, it was so good. He was really good. These these ants now they they occupied what the the, the baseboard or did they get into something? I mean, uh, like they're all around the edge or did they manage to get well, in your yeah, toaster they, or something? My toaster. They did. I I'm, 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 I was making toast and I'm thinking, why does the toaster <laughs> smell like hair burning? You know, when you like you singe your hair on a stove or something. Ooh. It's like, what the hell's that all about? Fried ants on toast. I'm, oh, I'm licking man, they, my lips already. They came already. streaming <laughs> out of there. Opened the dishwasher. They were all over the dishwasher. They were, but this, but uh, this guy, Mr. Nightingale, he he came in, man. He had his high-powered flashlights and he said, "Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, I know where they're going. I know where they're coming from." The guy was terrific, and he says, "Oh, I found the main line, the super highway, man. They're coming right across here from your out from your deck there." Under the, oh gosh, it was, and he said, so he's putting this stuff down, and he said, he said, these will be gone, you won't find any tomorrow, and he was right, and we have not found an ant since. So he, did, did kill them all? Could you see the carcasses, or did they all bailed out? Uh, I, I saw one, I saw one, it was kind of stuck on the wall, but uh, the rest of them are just dried up, I guess, I don't know. No, I think they, uh, they always carry their wounded and you know oh, okay back to the back with back, the back to the fort <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you he know, said, i don't, I don't want to laugh at you about yeah, that but uh, i can picture i can picture uh, dealing with those issues uh, yeah. yes he said you know and he, he made sense he said you know while we were gone the, the palm trees over overgrew touching the house touching the screens and he said that's how they get in and highway and highway yeah so yeah. I, I spent yeah. two days while while I was recovering from my COVID booster, trying to hack these things down, that was no fun. Hey. He's, this guy said, he said, well, the good news is these are like the cleanest bugs out there. <laughs> he said, they don't make much of a mess. <laughs> so okay. on, on the bright side, looking on, on the, the bright, bright looking on the bright side. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so uh, everybody, everybody, not everybody, I'm sure relates to the answer. They, but we've all we've got a lot of response from that. Uh, but it, it seems like that's a would always be a recurring subject for some way, some reason. 
Uh, I even had to call uh, the, the exterminator in the other day. I didn't know what it was. And he walked up and you know what he did? He took his phone, took his phone down to the little debris field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turn, turned the light on, took a picture of it and mm -hmm. then brought it up and looked at it closely. He said, Oh, you have ants. I said, all righty. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, okay, we'll get them. So go at it. I meant to be in a minute to ask you here. Have you heard from your buddy Elon? You know, I I'm would still love wait. To... I'm still waiting for a reply for you for that letter. You know, he never did reply to that letter, but that maybe guy. maybe we're not high enough on the um, on the scale. But but uh, you know, you can always, I guess, get him on Twitter. He does a lot of Twitter stuff. Well, hey, you see, the deal's back on. He think he he, he's he, back he agreed on? to purchase. He agreed to purchase Twitter now. At least it's, oh, you know, the deal's soul. on. It's in the process, so he's trying to line up the financing again. From what I could tell from, you know, just listening to the, to the financial news guys say that he's been kind of forced to do this because, you know, he had this, uh, you know, Twitter had this lawsuit uh, against him for backing out of the deal, and it was set up for a court in New Jersey. I forget the name of the court. Anyway, uh he was going to have to testify in, at this trial. And if he testified, it, it would come out that he actually knew about the bot problem beforehand. He knew he had a lot of, there are a lot of emails floating back and forth. So he knew what he was getting into. And so that would be very embarrassing for him. Plus it would cost him, you know, was, I, I was guessing it was going to cost him five or six billion or something. Other people said it would have cost him ten billion to buy his way out. I don't. Who knows? But he's going in for the whole forty-four now. Hmm. And, and at least that's they said that's today. Now this is like the never-ending saga here. Isn't isn't that interesting that that something like that and the money involved? I mean, I'm going to spend forty-four billion dollars because I don't want to testify if I made a mistake. I mean, why don't he just pay, say I'm sorry and give him the seven million or something or whatever it was? I guess I don't know. I never wanted to interview him about stuff like that. Anyhow, I wanted to ask him other questions about, you know, could you get you, on the Mars ship, ship, right? No, but how do you like? I would have said, hey, uh, what made you think of getting involved in the spaceship? You know, mm -hmm. what, what made you think of getting involved? And then I think what amazed me more than anything was how did he put a crew together that that did what it did? And by that I mean, how did he get the booster to land? Mm -hmm. Why didn't NASA come up with that years ago? Yep. And I would have said, that's the kind of stuff. I would love it. It would be wonderful. Talk, but I don't think two old bucks is ever going to get in any, any, uh, anybody of that, uh, you know, that's way too high. What, but if he could, if he did come on, he could probably make some statements and nobody would know about it. Nobody right? would know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Only those people in Normalville would ever yeah. know. Yeah, he, uh, could, he could talk. So, yeah. well, best of luck to Elon, I guess. Yeah. Hey, but speaking of space, we talked about the uh, dimorphous asteroid that got bumped by the dart rocket that crashed into it i read that That's, i read that. you see it's now it, it has it was a success it actually it changed its orbit it bumped it enough to change its orbit a bit so i found that to be interesting yeah 10,000 years from now somebody's going to thank these guys what if they really have to do it because it's a serious serious endeavor i mean like this thing is coming at us Right now, I don't even know. They would probably throw their hands up and say, you know, we just don't care. <laughs> Let it hit us, and whatever survives, survives. We, we, we're we just in such bad shape. Maybe it'll change uh, everything, and and the few people that go back to the Stone Age can start all over again and make a make a correct job. Yeah. Well, if it does hit, I hope I'm at ground zero. That's all I got to say. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be around with what's left. I don't. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Yeah, we got a we got a letter from afar here. We got a letter that a, one of our loyal listeners said that we should do talk more about quantum entanglement. Do you believe that? <laughs> we let me let me let me say that too. I mean, if I'm hearing this correct, you're saying we actually have a listener who wants to know more about he wants to know quantum, more about quantum, quantum entanglement. entanglement. I replied to him. I said, I already, I already said everything I know about quantum entanglement. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else I can say to clarify that anymore. Oh, it's just, we're going to need, it's just we're gonna need some smarter old bucks to answer that we're question. Gonna, yeah, we're going to have to find some physicists or something. 
But Anyhow, so, we got a, we got a diverse audience. You never know who's picking this up. You never I, know. I find that to be interesting sometimes too. That uh, or somebody randomly could be listening to us, and there are many, there are many folks out there. And uh, see, and, we've uh, got new listeners in. Uh, yeah, it's fun. France too. and Spain, and we, we might go into double figures here at some point. Hey, I don't know. Uh, you know what I was thinking, Dave? I was thinking, what, what do you think? We, let's sell real estate. Let's let's advertise real estate. Like you want to buy a condo, and you could we could see if anybody would give us a call and say, yeah, I'll buy it. I'll sell you a condo. I, I have a condo that's made to be remodeled every every two years. It's all it's everything is put together temporarily, so you can just, just unscrew it and change the paint color on the walls, and you know, okay, and put, it, and put it all back together again in a different fashion. So it's easy, you know. Everything is in uh, in. Ex- a nice even footage, <laughs> no corners, well, no, no angles to cut. Just lift it up, take it out, slip a bunch of new dude down, and you're back in business. Where, where exactly? Right where, where did this fall in your Rolodex here? <laughs> I thought where, about where did, that the other day. I said, I said, what uh-huh. if we, what if the old bucks say, hey, we have, a, we know where you can buy a condo for less than two hundred thousand dollars in Florida. How about that? And even, uh, even better. Yeah, and see if uh, and see if we can get some bites on it. In fact, there's probably going to be a lot of real estate for sale uh, down, you know, down Ooh. in Florida because Ooh. of the because of the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, oh, that's we'll a bad see. Topic. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll get a, a somebody will write in and say, "Where is that? I'd like to see that place." You know, you're on your own on that one, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I, that's right. We probably that's shouldn't what, encourage that because I don't want to be that busy. Right? That's I, one old you know, buck. That's take one my old two buck. o'clock nap. Yeah. <laughs> So hey, you remember uh, you remember milkweeds? I know milkweed. When we kid, remember milkweed? That. Yeah, we used to remember, we're kids. Isn't we used that to, the, we used to break it and it get all over you? It's a yeah, white, sticky collect those pods and then yeah. they had a white, fluffy, silky. Yeah, we used to play baseball with them. Remember, we throw them as a base, use it as a baseball, and then the thing would explode and that stuff would go everywhere. Well, I just learned a couple things here. Number one. I just learned that the floss, that the floss from the milk pot, milkweeds was collected during World War II to fill life preservers and life vests for the military. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That either. was before our time, of course, but mm. yeah, it was used to they, they they had drives, they had collection spots for for milkweed and they Have you get, seen any of that stuff lately anywhere? Well, wow, that's the point. That's the other point I'm getting to. It's, the, it's the milkweed uh, production is way down in Mother Nature, and for a couple reasons, uh, you know, urban encroachment. You know, more and more people are, you know, building houses and fields are going away. Plus, use of herbicides that uh, take out everything, and it turns out that that monarch butterflies like to lay their eggs on the milkweed milkweed pods. You know, that and, I knew. That I okay. knew. Okay. Okay, and then the uh, then the caterpillars eat the leaves before they you know transform before they do the whole chrysalis thing and become a butterfly. Interesting. So milkweed milkweeds are way down, and monarch butterflies are down ninety percent as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. So there you go. So there are efforts there are efforts afoot now to replant milkweed and save the monarchs, which I think is that's a noble effort. At least in their in their migratory uh, path, I would think. I, I think yeah. I, I know that the, I know that the monarchs like that, but they. I think uh, when they gave the moniker milk weed, that probably doomed it. If they would have said the, the butterfly plant, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. would have, it stood a better it chance. Might have, might have stood. Hey, let's a not chance. kill that. That's a butterfly plant. That was a milk yeah, weed. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. You heard well, that here first, by the way, on uh, two old bucks. You know, this is goes. just like the lanternfly, the yeah. spotted lanternfly. So the next yeah, that's right. Monarch butterflies down ninety percent. Milkweed down ninety percent. Might be a correlation there. Might be causal. So, what other scientific stuff have you been you've been dabbling in? I've been dealing with so many uh, what uh, reality things. I haven't had a chance to. I haven't even opened the book lately. Not even one. There's too much too much mess to clean up. Oh, I'm reading uh, short stories of the last hundred years, American short stories of the last hundred years. And I'm up to like 1970 now. Got to tell you, some of those old short stories were pretty bad. (laughs) 
<laughs> these were the best of the best they're picking out. So it's just di- a different, different time, different styles, different things that people were looking for. But some of those, some of those stories were dreadful, and these were like two or three of the best of the decade for each decade. And uh, we had some sparse decades going on back in the twenties and thirties. Are you doing that for amusement, or are you doing it amusement? Because, That's because amusement. you are a bit of a writer. I mean, no, you can just, get a few good paragraphs out that are pretty meaningful when you write. Uh, you know, maybe you're just trying to see how, how what others think. But of course, if it's not interesting, it's not interesting. Not interesting. If it's if it's a period piece, that always can turn you off. So I hear you. Well, you know what I think. You think what? I think we're getting to the end of the road here, buddy. Ah, uh, the old bucks. I'm tired today. I could. I'm. I'm gonna. I definitely. I'm tired. I'm just. Some, I feel overwhelmed. Sometimes. Why don't you take a little nap today? I, I think that will not be a problem. Okay. That would be a problem. Hey, always good. Always good checking in with you. Uh, we'll spend more time together in person, obviously, from here on in, uh, since you're a little bit closer. Uh, yeah. So this is old Buck Dell saying, uh, "It's just uh, just the two old bucks, uh, like they are." And thanks for listening. This is. Old Buck Dave saying the same thing. We're just who we are. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time. Hear you next time. You'll hear us next time. Bye-bye.